What did you learn from Iowans? Well, once again, we find that uh, people of Iowa are very connected to the political landscape, and I think that they do a great service for the people of the rest of the country. Because people know the issues, they know the candidates. Uh, they are not easily charmed because somebody's running for president. They're not impressed by that. They're impressed with when you give them substantive answers and you can uh, deal in specifics. And I think it's part of the reason that the Iowa caucuses play a very legitimate and very important role for all of America, not just for Iowa. You guys talked about a lot of important issues today. Iran, Hillary Clinton's mm -hmm. uh, email server. What's been popping at you as something that Iowans care deeply about and what you've kind of hit to? You know, of all the issues that I hear about, the two that continue to come up, one is uh, the economy. How do we get jobs back? I talked to a person today over in uh, Winterset. Her husband is working three part-time jobs. And this is the story I hear a lot of places. I told a story about meeting a guy in South Carolina working three part-time jobs. She comes up to me afterwards and says, that's my husband. He's working 80 hours a week, seven days a week. And that's what so many Americans are having to do just to be able to keep food on the table. Uh, when the president says the economy is in recovery, maybe his is in recovery, but a lot of hardworking Americans are not finding an economic recovery going on right now. Uh, my last question, a new poll out today shows uh, Donald Trump still with a pretty significant lead in Iowa. Uh -huh. uh, the rest of the pack kind of slipping a little bit. What's your reaction to that? Uh, the poll we saw with CNN had us in third among Republican voters, and uh, you know we've continued to, to show a very steady position. I think that's uh, important for us, although you know we have, I, I guess, maybe the experience of having done this before. We have a saying in our campaign, if you're hot when it's hot, you'll be cold when it's cold. Uh, so it's best not to be too on fire in the summer before the caucuses, because historically that's not where you want to be. It's not where you will be when it comes caucus time. We're just about where we need to be. Great. My last question, I guess, now, I hear you really like that pork chop on a stick. You're looking forward to the fair? I love the pork chop on a stick. I've told people all over America that you go to a lot of state fairs and they have the typical fried stuff. It's, you know, kind of uh, what you expect. But there's something that the Iowa State Fair has that nobody else has, and that's the pork chop on a stick. First time I ever tried one, I thought, okay, I'll do the photo op. I'll take a bite and, you know, make the obligatory smile toward the camera. I bit into it, and they said, okay, Governor, let's go. And I said, get away from me. Don't touch me. I'm eating the whole thing. And I did. It was one of the best things I've ever had ever anywhere, not just at the State Fair. Absolutely fantastic, and I'm excited about it. Uh, having a pork chop on a stick tomorrow. And you bet nobody's going to take it out of my hands. That's great. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thanks. Religious liberty has been yep. an issue that's been cr coming up often in this uh, campaign. I was wondering, there's a, a bill that's being considered, that'll be considered this fall, called the First Amendment Defense Act. Is that something, as president, you would sign? Yeah, I would sign it. But I think it's uh, you know important for us to note that when people file a bill, that doesn't mean it's going to become law. A lot of people say, I'm going to file, I'm going to introduce an amendment. Uh, what, what's important is when does it get signed? When does it become law? We need a president who can shepherd legislation through. It's one of the reasons that I think somebody who has been a governor, who has understood the process and the role of getting a piece of legislation not introduced, heck, anybody can do that. Can you get it delivered all the way to the point of signature and law? And are there any other things that you feel that like you as a president could do to defend religious liberty? Well, there's several things a president could do. Number one, uh, a president could and should and will, if I'm the president, make it very clear that we will uh, protect the religious liberty of every citizen, every institution, every agency, hospital, school, uh, church, and individual business uh, whose owners have religious convictions. Second thing, you would task the attorney general with the vigorous defense of people whose religious liberties are being trampled upon. Instead of going out to Oregon and trying to hurt people like the Kleins, you'd send the Justice Department out there to protect them. And the third thing is to make it clear to the Secretary of Defense that you expect the religious liberty of every chaplain and every airman, uh, soldier, sailor, marine, and coast guardsman to be fully protected. And if a chaplain wants to read his Bible, counsel people uh, according to his faith, pray with them, Whatever uh, he would wish to do, that would be honored, and nobody would be able to interrupt that. My last question, speaking of, of investigations, would you investigate or order the Department of Justice to investigate Planned Parenthood? I think they should be criminally investigated and, based on what we've seen, criminally prosecuted. What they've done is uh, apparently, from all 
clear indications, a absolute violation of federal law to sell the body parts of a human being uh, for gain. And what they're doing is indefensible. And even if somehow somebody can say that it's not illegal, it's immoral. It's unconscionable. And it's the, the kind of thing that you would expect out of a barbaric society. You would not expect that out of civilized people. Thanks. Thank you. All right, y'all.